Ice Sky Snow Blink. I don't even know what these things are, but I love them. Hi, and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kepi. I'm a professional songwriter, and I also teach songwriting and lyric writing for universities and colleges around the world, including for Berkeley Online, the Australian College of the Arts in Melbourne, and the Sydney Conservatorium of Music here in Sydney, Australia. In this video, I want to take apart the lyrics of three songs. The songs Mirable by Taylor Swift, Locked Out of Heaven by Bruno Mars, and the song Belief by John Mayer, because each of these songs is the same type of song. They are all metaphor songs. I'm going to show you how the metaphor works in each of these songs, how to extract the principles of great metaphor writing, and then how to build your lyrics around one central metaphor. I'm also going to show you the best book by far that you can own to help you write lyrics like these. By the end of this video, you will have a method for generating unique and fresh lyrics so that you can write the type of song favored by these three amazing songs. Songwriters. Let's first start by defining what a metaphor is. A metaphor at its core is a way of seeing one image through the lens of another. So if I say something like the sky is a mouth, I'm actually describing the sky, right? And I'm using the image of a mouth as the metaphor image. So we can start to introduce a little bit of metaphor vocabulary that will help us understand the structure of metaphors. So in that example, the sky is a mouth. The sky is the target idea and mouth is the metaphor. So what metaphor does is it overlaps those two things, right? It's asking us to use the language of a mouth to describe the sky. And it's the area of overlap between those two images that we can call the linking quality or the connection between the two things. That area of overlap is the way in which those two things are similar. The real spark of a great metaphor happens because of two things. The first is when the combination of images is a novel combination. For example, her haircut was a church, her face heavy under the weight of its seriousness. So in that example, I'm almost guaranteeing that you've never heard someone's haircut described as a church before, right? So it's the combination of one thing and a surprising other that creates this amazing sensation of, of hearing something new, hearing something fresh, hearing something original. The second way that a metaphor can be amazing is when there is something familiar about the combination, but the connection point is a new or fresh perspective on that connection. A nice example of that would be if I said something like, as the conversation flowed, I started to drown in the undercurrent of everything I didn't understand. So obviously in that example, the conversation flowed is the familiar combination. And what's interesting there is that I'm using a verb metaphor, which I'll talk more about later on in the video. So the conversation flowed is actually a metaphor because a conversation doesn't literally flow. I'm using words and imagery, drawing from a different image pool to describe a conversation, but it's familiar. However, the way that I then continued that sentence is using the imagery of a river or a tide to say something new about the way in which the conversation is happening. So normally when we say a conversation flowed, we meant it was easy, right? But in this example, I'm saying, no, it wasn't easy. I was drowning in the river of that conversation in the undercurrent pulling me down. Okay, so let's start our exploration of our three songwriters here with the Bruno Mars song, Locked Out of Heaven. The first thing to identify is what is the central metaphor of this song? So what we're going to do is look at the lyric and pick out the language that we can see is acting as a metaphor. It's not literally describing the topic or the target idea. It's borrowing language from some other image base. So inside this lyric, we can see the language swimming in your water, born again, paradise, heaven. So the overarching metaphor here is really religion. Even though we never see or hear the word religion in the lyrics, all this language is centered around that central metaphor. We can think of religion as the central or parent 
metaphor and then all this other language we can think of as related metaphor. Now that we have this language of parent metaphor and related metaphor, let's have a look for more related metaphor centered around the central metaphor of religion. You bring me to my knees, you make me testify, you can make a sinner change his ways, open up your gates because I can't wait to see the light and right there is where I want to stay. All right, so it's pretty saucy, but it's really fun in that combination, in that conflict of ideas. So really great. And, you know, in this section, it's all drawing on religion language to express the ideas that he's actually talking about. So remembering that Religion is not the topic of conversation here. The topic of conversation is really sex and sexuality. All right, so to summarize where we're at at the moment, we have a few important concepts. One important concept is that of the central or parent metaphor, and then using language related to the parent metaphor. What we can also see in this song and the other songs we're gonna look at is that the songs are loyal to one central metaphor. They're not dipping in and out of that metaphor, drawing on other metaphors. It's not saying love is like a wave. It's also like a flower. It's also like a peanut, right? It's not trying to draw on all sorts of different images. It's loyal to one central metaphor and uses language related to that one central metaphor to flesh out the lyrics in all the sections. Let's have a look at how this plays out in the song Mirrorball by Taylor Swift. So this song is a particular type of metaphor song where she's not saying X is Y, like the sky is a mouth or love is fire. She's saying I am a mirror ball. So this is really a pronoun metaphor where we're saying I, you, he, she, right? We're using a person and using an image to describe that person. So in this case, she's describing herself, I'm a mirror ball, right? That is the central metaphor or the parent metaphor in this song. So let's comb through and find the related metaphor that is derived from the central metaphor of mirror ball. Show you every version, shimmering, when I break, it's in a million pieces, spinning, shining, watch my shattered edges glisten, even in this bridge section, which goes even further with the metaphor, it kind of takes it out of just a mirror ball and really brings in the idea of a performance or a big act or a masquerade. We get language that is all metaphor based around the idea of performance. So we get the circus, burn the disco down, rodeo clowns, I'm still on that tightrope, trapeze, and especially the last line of the bridge that leads us back to that central metaphor, I'm still trying everything to keep you looking at me, right? That is that connection point, actually. That's language that expresses the linking quality, how those two things are, are alike. How I am like a mirror ball is I'm doing everything to make you look at me. So again, another amazing song centered around a central metaphor that expands and fleshes out all the lyrics using verbs, nouns, adjectives, and phrases that are related to that central central image. Before I look at the John Mayer song, I now want to introduce you to the book <laughs> that I was all excited about. That is the best book you can own to help you do this. So this is the book here. It is the Roger's International Thesaurus. And you can see that it's a really big fat book. Mine's quite old now. This is the sixth edition. I'm sure there are other editions. If you're going to get one, it has to be the International Thesaurus. The reason for that is that it's not a um, normal thesaurus. It's not just synonyms for words. What it does is it gives you all the nouns, verbs, and adjectives that are related to whatever search term you look up. So it goes a lot deeper, a lot wider than mere synonyms. So I'm gonna give you an example. Let's say I've decided that I'm gonna use the metaphor image of light. And that might be the sun or it might be some other kind of light, but I'm using light as my metaphor image. That is my parent metaphor, right? I found light and now I've got this huge array of nouns, verbs and adjectives all surrounding my central search term, but not necessarily only limited to the literal synonyms for light. So let me give you a little smattering of what this is giving to me. So I've got light, Illumination, radiation, radiance, invisible light, shine, luster, sheen, gloss, glow, gleam, incandescence, lightness, lucidity, brilliance, splendor, glory, glare, vividness, 
beam, gleam, stream, streak, glitter, glimmer, shimmer, twinkle, blink, sparkle. Okay, so many. And I haven't even gotten to verbs yet. Let's go to verbs now. Just a few verbs because they're really gorgeous. Flash, flare, blaze, flame, flicker, flutter, waver, dance, play, quiver. Incredible. So the cool thing about this book is there's really nothing that I have found on the internet that replicates this. One of the other things that this book does so brilliantly is that once I've kind of read all my light words, the very next list is also related to whatever came before it. So right under all these light related words, I now have light source and immediately under that I have its opposite. I have darkness right underneath that. So I have as rich and deep of a list related to darkness as I do for light. And it's a really good lyric writing strategy when you're using a metaphor base. If there is a natural contrast to it, if there's a natural opposite, to also generate a list of words and phrases related to its opposite, because that contrast can be a really beautiful thing in lyrics. Okay, so that's the Roger's International Thesaurus. Let's do the same thing that we did with the other two lyrics to the song Belief by John Mayer. What's interesting about this song is the title doesn't indicate to us the metaphor, the title indicates to us the target idea. This is a song about belief, using language of a metaphor to describe the aspects of belief. The central metaphor here is one of war. So it's describing belief as a war. And once we know that, we can scan through the rest of the lyrics and find all the language that John Mayer very deliberately generated that is all centered around that central image of war. We see paint on a sign, breaking rank, beautiful armor, heaviest sword, punching underwater, you never can hit who you're trying for. Exhibition is also war-related imagery. And of course, then we get it's the chemical weapon for the war that's raging on inside. And that's probably our closest and most direct statement of the metaphor, the central metaphor in this song. But we can see war or battle-related imagery and language scattered throughout the lyric here. And the entire lyric is centered on that one metaphor. It's not dipping in and out of other metaphors. It's that one thing that furnishes the whole lyric with its imagery. So a quick note here on kinds of metaphor, because the kind of metaphor we all learned more or less as kids is this basic X is Y, the sky is a mouth, love is fire, where we're comparing one noun to another noun. But there are other ways to express metaphor, and we saw one before with the conversation flowed. So that's what's called a verb metaphor. We're using a verb drawn from one image base, but applying it to a noun from a different image base. You can also use adjectives as metaphors using the same principle here. So if I draw an adjective from one image base, let's say, for example, the adjective floral. Okay, if I want to describe something non-flowery as floral, I'm going to create an adjective noun metaphor. For example, his floral speech. Let's talk in more practical terms about how you build a metaphor. The first thing you need to do is find your parent metaphor. Find that central image that you're going to use as the lens through which you are looking at and describing your target idea. Step two is build a word palette of nouns, verbs, adjectives, and phrases that are related to that parent metaphor. So you can use a reference like the Roger's International Thesaurus, you can use your brain, you can also go on the internet and see what you can find. One thing I like to do is also to write prose for 10 minutes, so just a free write, keeping the metaphor in mind. So if I'm going to say something like, jealousy is a circus, I'm going to spend 10 minutes just writing prose, exploring how is this thing like this other thing? In what ways are they similar? In what ways are they different? How can I use circus imagery to describe aspects of jealousy? How can I find a story inside jealousy, a personal story, something that happened to me or a specific situation that I can apply terms of the metaphor to, to start combining metaphor and target idea? So once you've got your word palette, once you've got some phrases that you might draw from a bit of prose writing. Now you're going to start more deliberately applying the metaphor to terms of your target idea. 
You can experiment, be playful, be bold, be courageous, be wild. Write down as many things as occur to you and eventually you can whittle it down and pick only the gems that really stand out at the end. You can do this line by line and sort of construct individual lines of lyric as you go. Again, still in this very generative phase where you're just creating a lot of information. Or you can do it as prose, write it sentence by sentence, write a little narrative, but start to integrate that metaphor language. Once you've done that, you have a whole whole lot of raw material to draw on and the key is to pick only the best parts it's easy to go too far with metaphor to sort of squeeze it and juice it for more than it's worth you really want to generate a lot to get to interesting ideas and expressions that you wouldn't think of first but once you've generated all that information really only pick the absolute gems that stand out to you some final very important tips about metaphor writing. Don't rely on familiar or cliched metaphors. Seek out new combinations of ideas or seek out a new angle on a familiar metaphor. For example, if I heard love is an ocean, well, that really rings in my ear as a cliche. However, if I then heard love is an ocean, you pushed me in, now my feet can't touch the bottom of you. Well, now you're Phoebe Bridges from the song, The Moon Song. I hope looking deeply at the lyrics inside these amazing metaphor songs and generating a method for understanding metaphor and then constructing metaphor based lyrics has been helpful, is exciting, is inspiring and encourages you to experiment, to play and to write some songs. Before I sign off, I wanted to let you know that if you want to ask us questions directly, we have started a Patreon and for as little as $3 a month, you can be part of a songwriting community, get access to exclusive content, including PDFs, video content not on the YouTube channel, as well as big discounts to our live online workshops. And you can ask us anything related to songwriting and we'll get to as many of them as we can in our monthly Q&A exclusively on Patreon. Happy songwriting. Bye.